Hello, my name is Joe, and welcome to another edition of Joe Super Fantabulous PC Gaming Channel, where I play through the tutorials for the Rise of Nations. And next up is Henry VIII. So I'm curious to see how this plays out. Hmm. It's part real-time strategy, part city building, you know. Uh, so it's kind of interesting. And, and it has this uh, some interesting little mechanics, uh, you know, having national borders and assimilating other cities uh, that I haven't seen in other uh, games of this type before. So this is really interesting. So let's give uh, Henry VIII a try. In 1509, following a century of turmoil, England has stabilized under the rule of the legendary King Henry VIII. During his 38-year reign, he will marry six times, break with the Catholic Church, and fight several wars. Early in Henry's reign, the King of Scotland invades England. To secure his throne, Henry must master the rapidly changing nature of warfare while effectively running his country. The Scottish, led by King James IV, have invaded northern England and captured a number of strongholds. The English army is marching north to face them, but for the time being, English citizens must fend for themselves. We must defend against the Scottish raids and prevent Winchester from falling under the rule of King James. Protect your citizens or they'll be killed by the Scottish. You don't have any military units nearby and don't have time to train any, so we'll have to sound the alarm which will bring our citizens to safety within the city. Good job. Citizens near the city will run to the nearest city, fort, or tower for safety. The citizens in hiding will fire arrows at their attackers. The Scots have had enough and are retreating. I think we are safe for a while so we can send our citizens back to work. Select the all clear button to send your citizens back to work. Good job. Now your citizens will return to where they worked before you sounded the alarm. The king knows of our situation and we've been assured that reinforcements are coming. We must continue gathering resources while we wait for protection to arrive. We need to replace the woodcutters camp that was destroyed in the raid. On the right side of our nation, there is a large forest far from Scottish eyes. Unfortunately, we can't establish a woodcutter's camp there because the forest is beyond our national borders, which is indicated by the red line. A nation cannot build outside its borders, so we will need to extend our borders. One of the best ways to increase your territory is by building new cities. Let's try to build one near the woods. Select one of your citizens. Select the buildings button. You can see that the Build City option is grayed out. Some buildings require certain technologies before they can be built. If you move the mouse over the Build City button and read the help text, it states that building a city requires researching civics at the library. So let's go to the library and research civics. Research the first blue civics technology, City State, at the library. Okay, I was wondering how you extend the national borders other than outright conquest. <laughs> Excellent work. With each blue civics technology you research, you can add an additional city to your nation. Now build a city near the forest on the right side of your nation. city is complete and your national borders have been extended. Now most of the forest is within our territory and we can build a woodcutter's camp. Build a woodcutter's camp near the forest. Try to find a spot where eight or nine citizens can work. Ah, there we go. And let's see, from the other tutorial I learned, you want to highlight as many trees as possible and get them in there.
We need to fill the woodcutters camp with workers. One quick way to assign new citizens to the woodcutters camp is to give the city a rally point. A rally point directs units to go to a specific location when they are built. Select your new city. Now select the rally point button in the city's interface. <laughs> now left click on your woodcutters camp to set it as your rally point. New good. Now all the citizens created at the city will go to work at the woodcutters camp. If you create more citizens than there are openings, they'll move near the camp and wait for your command. Now create enough citizens at your new city to fill the woodcutters camp to capacity. Remember to move your mouse over your woodcutters camp to see how many you need. You can also use rally points on military buildings to have your newly created units gather near a strategic location. Our reinforcements have just arrived. We are saved from the Scots. The general claims there is no mistake. This is the entire reinforcement. These javelineers and a few light cavalry are all the English command could spare to send us. These outdated units won't be much good against the Scottish hordes. We'll need to advance our nation to the gunpowder age or our forces will be crushed by the Scottish army. We need to start gathering knowledge to advance to the gunpowder age. Knowledge is gathered by building universities and filling them up with scholars. So first, select a citizen and build a university. Let's see, do we have anybody who's idle? Well, you know what, I could pull someone off of uh, a stupid task. Like, yeah, not worried about the mine here. Then send them back to the mine once they're done. Universities generate some knowledge on their own, but need scholars to be fully effective. Select your university. We have just enough wealth to fill up the university with scholars. Build seven scholars at the university. When a scholar is complete, they appear within the university. Each scholar in a university adds to your knowledge gathering rate. <laughs> I like how this demonstrates uh, how many scholars you have. We filled our university to capacity, and we will gather enough knowledge soon to advance to the gunpowder age. However, we spent all our wealth on scholars. We need to start gathering more wealth to refill our coffers. You gain wealth by establishing trade routes with caravans between your cities. To build caravans, we need to first build a market. Build a market. starts off kind of really slow and good now select your market but it looks like anyone of any skill level should be able to play rise of nations you can build caravans and merchants at the market we want to create a caravan when caravans are created they're idle for a moment they then find an available open route between cities and start to establish a trade route with sufficient commerce research, a trade route can be established between any two cities. We currently have two cities, thus we only need one caravan to generate wealth from the trade route. If you want to generate more wealth, build more cities and caravans to travel between them. While we're waiting for the caravan to generate more wealth for us, we can start looking at other rare resources on the map. 
Besides the common resources of food, timber, metal, wealth, and knowledge, there are rare resources that we can also control. This is spice, a rare resource. Move your mouse over the spice for help text about the effect spice has on your... The help text says that we get a bonus for caravan income. This will help us generate even more wealth. We need to build a merchant to take advantage of the spice. We need to build a merchant to take advantage of the spice. Build a merchant at the market. Okay, okay, good grief. You get kind of pushy here. Good job. Select your merchant and right-click the spice so your merchant can gather this rare resource. Units can automatically travel across water if you have a dock and two commerce technologies researched at your library. We have the needed requirements, so your merchant will pack itself into a boat and move across the water. Uh, we kind of glossed over that part. Hmm. Your merchant has set up shop and is now gathering spice for your nation. You have established wealth income by making a trade route between cities and received a bonus by sending a merchant to gather the rare resource spice. Good job. While we've been setting up our trade routes to gather wealth, our scholars have generated enough knowledge to upgrade to the gunpowder age. To advance an age, we need to do research at the library. Select your library. The top row of buttons in the library record your nation's progress through the ages. We're currently in the medieval age, and we want to advance to the gunpowder age. Upgrade to the gunpowder age now. Congratulations! Our nation has advanced from the medieval age to the gunpowder age. Among other advantages, advancing in age allows your units to be upgraded. Also notice that your buildings have changed their appearance to reflect your nation's new status. Select your barracks. The top row of units are ones currently available. Below each unit is its upgrade. Below the elite javelinier is its upgrade, arquebusier. Now let's upgrade our javelineers to modern units before King James attacks. Select the arquebusier upgrade to start researching this new unit type. Note that all of your javelineers are now arquebusiers. Whenever you research a unit upgrade, all of your old units will automatically upgrade to the new type. Our spies report preparations in Leicester to the north. I think King James has grown restless and is ready for battle. Move your entire military near your city of Winchester to prepare for the attack. Remember to sound your alarm when the Scottish attack, so your citizens will run to safety and fire guns at the attackers. Congratulations. We have defeated the Scottish attack and survived against all odds. <laughs> against all odds? Well, you know, it's a tutorial, so it's kind of in my favor. But it was very useful training for uh, Rise of Nations. Well, 
Hmm, this is a really interesting title, which I received this one as a gift, and uh, what a great gift. Uh, from my, uh, from OLG. Ah, oh, the very beautiful gamer girl. <laughs> Join me next time here on Joseph Fantapio's PC Gamer Channel, where we'll have fun with the Battle of Britain. We're really going to jump, you know, uh, in years ahead here, all the way up to 1940. I'm curious to see just how well Rise of Nations deals with that uh, kind of a leap. <laughs> see you next time.